Yeah. Let's smash it out. So firstly, how important is content in video games, whether it be before or after release? Content in video games? What do you mean that? What do you mean? Um, con- uh, content as it regards to video games, trailers, gameplay videos, all that sort of stuff. Oh, for marketing games? I mean, it's everything now. For marketing, you mean? Uh, not just for marketing, but yeah. Okay. Inclu- yeah, marketing. I mean, it's kind of, it's like essential now. So I would say that um, all the CMOs and like marketing executives I talk to in gaming, they're pretty much looking at video content in particular as being like almost the entire marketing strategy mm. for their games now. And creating, uh, so they're looking at videos as being almost the entire content strategy and and marketing strategy for their games Mm. and for anything they're making now. So it's really important for them to make in-house videos that are like explaining what their brand is about, telling their story, and then showcasing their product. And then 100% of CMOs now are like, and it's all about our influencer marketing strategy. Now, hold on a second. I thought it was all about advertising. What happened? It used to be all about advertising five years ago. What shift just occurred? And the answer is Web 2 is on its way out and it's dying. Apple and Google and Facebook aren't playing with each other anymore in terms of advertising because their advertising businesses are dying. This is what happens when an entrenched player, their CFO goes to the CEO and says, look man, our main business model It isn't growing anymore and it's going to decline. So what do you do? When you're number one, you put up the castle walls. You keep anybody from getting in and you try to hold on to your ground and your position. Mm -hmm. And so Apple shut off Facebook's access to their platform for ads. Google is doing the same. And they're all just trying to desperately hold on to their positioning in the market. So what does that mean? That means that advertising is becoming less and less effective. It's becoming more and more expensive for the results, leaving what remaining as a way to gain reach on all of these platforms, cutting out the centralized entity in the middle and going straight to the influencer. And so influencer marketing is skyrocketing. And it's really critical that you work with influencers and you come up with original concepts and you're constantly working with them in the future. It's way more important than an advertising budget. So if I were to guess, uh, by the end of this decade, I would say that the vast majority of gaming in particular, and certainly Alluvium, uh, a marketing budget will be spent on influencer marketing and producing original video content in-house, by far. Uh, and maybe some other platform or some other method will come up in the meantime. But the reason why all that stuff is great is an advertisement is like, uh, is like a flame or a firework. You shoot it and it goes pew, and then it vaporizes forever. You don't get any yield out of that advertisement after the advertisement is over and gone and paid for. Whereas a piece of influencer content could get a million views between now and five years from now. Your own videos could get a million views between now and five years from now. uh, And they keep paying dividends over time. And so we have found, in my opinion, a better model. Create your own in-house video content as your core, and then the influencers extend the reach of that content and your brand. Uh, And there's really less and less reason to pay centralized advertising agencies moving forward. And that's going to spell, of course, the death of Web 2, and then we'll move into Web 3. And then we'll pay for something else to get people's attention in Web 3. I don't know what it is, Mm. but it'll be something. Yeah, yeah. It's it's certainly crazy, and we're we're seeing a lot of the earnings discussions and things as these companies release their earnings, and and advertising is a clear one that keeps keeps on popping up. So, the other thing I want to talk about, back to ideas a little bit, is with Alluvium so transparent, like with their leaks and everything. How do you find exciting content to share with people? <laughs> how do you how do you go? This is an idea I can share that people haven't already seen, and I can spark curiosity and all the rest of it. Yeah, so it, it's the burden is on the creatives to make something interesting. Um, I don't know if we released it on socials yet, but you know, how many? I mean, how many rocks can we show, right? <laughs> so uh, that's not exciting, right? Anymore. Uh, but 
there are things the team is creating that are new and exciting. So for example, Grant just sent me a 3D rendering of an Atlas plushie. <gasps> that's exciting. People want that. Um, I, was, I wasn't expecting that. And so that's something I gave to the social media team to share. And it's like a Atlas plushie spinning around in 3D. So the creative team has to be creative. That's, that's it. And they have to do the unexpected. And they have to keep presenting stuff that people are not uh, expecting. And so I think that's what the Alluvium brand has been really good at up until this point. The Alluvials are kind of unexpected in style. The story, you guys have, the lore is so unexpected and it's weird. Everything about it is unexpected and weird. And so Alluvium is good at delivering something that you didn't think you were going to get. So that's mm -hmm. how. Uh, and as soon as the creative team starts getting samey in terms of what we're doing, um, that's probably the point where we're very successful. And then we become the, the entrenched player that's trying to hold on to our market share and just be careful. Uh, but at this phase, we're willing to take lots of risks, do lots of new things, bring in fresh talent, and just let them run with their ideas. That's how you get fresh ideas nonstop. And Kieran is excellent at bringing in people with fresh ideas and just letting them run with them and not micromanaging them. It's, that's why you see so much fresh and wild and weird and interesting things coming out of Alluvium. It's because the leadership allows it to happen and encourages it. That's very different than everywhere else where they want to button things up, they want to have control over the message, and they want mm -hmm. to centralize creativity and centralize the messaging. Alluvium is doing the opposite. And so it's by design, structurally, that Alluvium will release more interesting things than any other game studio because they let it happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think creativity is key. And I'm a creative myself, so I absolutely love it when I, I'm able to run with my own idea. And that, I mean, that just makes you work harder too. It's just a simple fact, right? I mean, if, if you want people that work for you to work harder, also a simple fact, right? So it, it, it makes sense in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, creative <laughs> people will work harder for you if you let them do the create their creative ideas mm -hmm. and they will make you something better for you if you let their creativity run wild like the videos i produce with andy the reason why andy and i work so well together is i just give him very clear direction i give him the assets he needs and i let him know what's in my head and i don't tell him how to execute at all i just let him execute in however he wants and so the videos come out better that way. And Kieran, when it comes to the videos I make, like the explainers or whatever, we got a bunch, by the way, in the pipe that are coming out, but mm. he, he will just tweak the script. Not once has he commented on any of the graphics or the sound effects or anything in these videos. He might say something about the messaging, like, eh, we can't really say that anymore because we changed the product. <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> but other than that, man, he just lets it happen. So the more freedom you give talented, creative people to be talented and creative, the more they'll produce for you. That's it. Mm. Um, so I've got two more key questions here. So firstly, a really quick one. Do you know if there will be any video content inside Alluvium? I've I don't know how to explain it, but like if you're walking around the overworld and there's going to be video content on the wall or something, advertising Alluvium yeah. Zero or something like, do you have any plans like yeah. that? Ah, uh, screens with video content in the game? I haven't I, I'm seen I'm not sure how that. you would do it. I haven't seen that. Cinematic sequences? Yes. Mm. So there, there are good. cinematics. There are cinematics being produced right now to tell the story of the game, like really nice cinematics that will be in the mm. game to tell the story of the game. Uh, think like cutscene type of cinematic yeah. that tells key story points as you're progressing through the story. So those have all been in the pipe for a while and have been getting produced. Those I are happening, but that. that's not like on it. That's not like a screen. Oh shit. I don't know if I just revealed something. Oopsie. Those are all being produced right now. Yeah. I mean, I was probably assumed, but I hadn't really thought about it in depth before. And I'm excited. They're being made. So that's really, really awesome. So yeah, oopsie doopsie. Thing... Maybe, maybe that's a first or something that nobody said anything about it, but yeah, those are being produced. Um, those are, those are all happening. Uh, and they're needed. I think, and they're going to be the best format to tell some of the more complex mm. aspects of the story. 
um, where doing like a normal cut scene or something with the 3D models in the game wouldn't be as good, right? Mm, mm. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, I'm excited to see them. I'm excited to see the lore and everything. It's been hyped up so much. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, so the last thing I'll ask you about is the Alluvium series that is going to be produced down the road. Now, I want to bring this into a kind of a Pokemon context where Pokemon, the video games, are about 1% of their revenue. Well, maybe a little bit more, but they're not much. Their anime, TV shows, movies, all that sort of stuff is the big part of their Pokemon media franchise. Are you planning to produce an Alluvium series in the future? Think Cyberpunk, Edge Runners, or Arcane. Um, and like, how far is Alluvium going to take that stuff? Is it going to, do you think it might be bigger than the game one day? I'll be, I need to be careful how I answer this question. So, um, <laughs> is it under construction? Uh, so, um, all right. Do I think like ancillary revenue streams, like merchandise and shows and all esports and all of these other things will be the majority of revenue? Definitely. So Illuvium is got like such an iconic brand and branding and characters. It's being designed in that way mm. to where we can actually do brand marketing. So what I mean by that is shitty video games require you to market the game and just like try to get installs on the game because the brand is garbage. Illuvium, we can market the brand because it's so good and it's so compelling. And just by marketing the brand, it'll sell an entire suite of products and shows and services and whatever Illuvium has to offer. So therefore, just like Pokemon's IP is so strong, the characters are so iconic and designed so carefully, Illuvium has that as well. So yeah, the majority of Alluvium's revenue will eventually not be video games, in my in my opinion. Hmm. Uh, but once again, we don't know what the future holds in terms of monetization within the Web3 space. So it's possible that things like NFTs are just so effing lucrative that you know there's no way any merchandise strategy could exceed that hmm. revenue. It's possible. I don't know. Uh, but I anticipate that that will be my, a minority portion of revenue. Will we produce... You mentioned Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I specifically have messaged all three Warwicks <laughs> with Cyberpunk Edge Runners as an example, a modern example of how a AAA show for a game can have significant marketing benefits. Like Cyberpunk went up to 1 million concurrent players on Steam after they released that show, and it was a dead game. And now sentiment for Cyberpunk has gone from negative to wildly positive and people are thrilled about the expansion that's coming out and they've already crossed now 20 million copies sold of the game so the case i'm making internally right now is uh i want us to make i want us to make alluvium anime because we need more eastern appeal with our intellectual mm. property it's a very western ip um, it'll appear, it'll appeal in the East, but it's a very Western IP. And I think we need an anime version of it to market it to the East, to be honest. And obviously anime is popular in the West, of course, but to market it to the East, we need something like that. Uh, and Grant has told me, um, and I'll, I'll let him communicate what his plans are in terms of a triple A movie or show, but Grant Warwick is not going to walk away from Alluvium without having made without having made either a triple a movie and or a triple a show for alluvium yeah that's all i'll say about it i'm that's not going to say whether we're producing it right now i'm not going to say whether we have deep plans on it right now i don't want to set any expectations there but that's what grant told me uh so once again we need to focus on getting the games out and launching our first set of games but we have the talent on the team right now, especially with Grant Warwick, who has a AAA cinematic background and we have various talent here. Like we know that this intellectual property lends itself well to, to content formats like that. And so we want to make that type of content. It's not just about video games here. It's not just about video games at all. This is an entire universe and an intellectual property that will cross over every format. Soon we will be releasing the merchandise aspect of it 
Mm. And you're going to start seeing each of these pieces get rolled out. I guess, I guess the part of that that I want to delve just a little bit deeper into is, is timelines. Now, obviously we're not asking for dates or anything here, but I, I always, I continuously ask myself, you guys are producing the game and the game's obviously taking a lot of time. How much of this stuff are you actually doing concurrently? Because now that we're seeing that you have two, two or three games or whatever, and you have the merchandise that's being worked on, you have a few other DeFi type things on the back burner that are kind of being worked on. Are you working a lot of this side by side? And and when it comes to, okay, now we need to start working on the TV show. If you're not already, now we need to start working on the TV show. Do you then go and hire studios and things? Or are you also going to work on a lot of that in-house? So what, kind of what, it's hard for me to, to kind of put into words. I understand what you're saying. So how do you prioritize all these things? Like if yeah. you're, if you're, if you're cooking so many things at the same time. So I can tell you like right now, our team like Grant and what have you, they aren't, they're, they're focusing on, he's focusing on overworld right now. So like, it's not like he's not, we're not, we're not producing a Nolluvian movie right now. Okay. But that doesn't mean that the team isn't thinking about it. And the team hasn't making plan like you can make plans for the future on something mm. without taking away from the task you're doing right in front of you right now, right? Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to development, there's different layers of development that get done. There's there's like art development, there is 3D modeling, there's things like blockouts, there's the blockchain side, there's all these different layers. And so we are developing lots of different things at the same time because different personnel are developing different things that are in different stages at the same time. If we just did one product at a time, we'd have like a bunch of people just sitting around wondering what to do because their parts already done on a lot of what, <laughs> on a lot of what we're creating. And so that, so development is more fluid and it has, it's multi-layered. So you've got multiple channels of development happening on multiple mm. products, not because you're spreading your focus, it's because different types of things needed to be developed for all of these different products. And by spreading it into layers and channels of development, you're actually developing all of it faster and more effectively and with resources in-house. And so people ask the question too, like they think that like by just a good analogy to answer your question, we do a we do alluvium showcase and alluva talks, and I see comments on the video sometimes that say, "Why are you focusing on making this show? You should be releasing the fucking game." Mm. It's like you do realize that this marketing has zero impact on any products. So, like, just because you see some sort of activity happening in alluvium in one area doesn't mean it has any impact on the thing you're thinking it mm. might have an impact on in another part of alluvium it's like then and, and then the, on, on the viewer side the audience side understandably they're like it appears to me that you guys are losing your focus it's like no <laughs> this is just a different part of alluvium doing something that doesn't mm. impact the other thing it's like you are focusing on this and maybe you wish we were talking about the thing that you want us to talk about but that doesn't mean Alluvium Game Studio has lost their focus. Mm. So that's the best way I can answer that question. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, um, I think that like the number one priority for Alluvium is getting these three games out. And that's why mm. we've got beta on Arena, imminent beta on Overworld, beta, imminent beta, or, or very soon beta on Alluvium Zero. Got to get the beta testing done so we can launch these. That's the number one focus of everything. So if anybody sees any communications, if they see us posting a plushie, if they see me <laughs> talking in this interview about how, yeah, we have talked internally about doing movies and shows, does that mean that that delays the launch of Alluvium Zero? No, not by a nanosecond, it doesn't. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 100%. Um yeah, yeah, I guess the only, no, I, I understand that absolutely. And I, I understood that before as well. And I guess where my head was at is once the game is launched, you obviously have to keep working on set two and things like that. So where do you kind of find the people to produce that TV show? You know, so do you guys think you'll get more studios and things in on, on Alluvium or you'll just expand the team that far that you'll be able to do it? Or do, do you kind of know kind of where the head's at there? 
Yeah. So, I mean, if we were to do it, so, so any type of TV show or movie, Grant would be taking the lead on how we should source production mm -hmm. and how that should relate, relate to in-house assets. But I think in-house people working on it. I think generally speaking, you would have a couple key creatives within Illuvium right now, such as Grant, providing direction and ensuring that whatever's being produced on a TV show or a movie or something is in line with the lore and the branding and in line with whatever our business objectives are as well, right? Mm. Then, then somebody like Grant is gonna make some key decision. He's either gonna go psycho and decide to hire everybody himself, or he's mm. gonna outsource it to some ice cold killer studio that he feels very confident in. That's up to Grant at that point in the case of tv show or movie he's he's like th the leading expert on that mm. so i don't know what the approach will be but there will be a key trusted person probably a warwick making that level of decision right just like aaron would be making key decisions on you know like game design on the next title or whatever and then Kieran would be making key decisions on when we're doing the next sale and generating revenue or investor decisions. So all that stuff is determined by a, those major decisions like that on whether we're going to hire in-house and ramp up resources or go outsourced and what have you. Those are, those are Warwick decisions that then go to the council. <laughs> like if we have to like source a bunch of money for something like, so for example, if we were going to need to hire an entire team to make a show or something, we would need to like work with the council on that. And like, that would be a massive expense and a huge focus. So, you know what I mean? So all those would all be considerations. Uh, so, yeah. so those are the two scenarios. You either have key creative talent in house providing direction to a fantastic AAA third party studio. That's what cyberpunk did. That's what CD project red with, did with the studio they worked with. For mm -hmm. cyberpunk edge runners 10 out of 10 like that show was so good it can work out if you have the right studio otherwise who knows with grant i don't know man ask grant yeah. awesome well thank you so much for joining me i will definitely ask grant that um thanks thanks for joining me thanks for jumping on the show today i really appreciate it um yeah is there anything else you'd like to leave us off on nope I always like talking to you. You're very thorough and in-depth. And <laughs> all the creators out there that watched, just go make some content, man. Just go copy what works to start with, and then it's all gravy from there. Awesome. Sounds good to me. All right. Have a good one, man. Adios.